All right, so we've had a bit of time now to digest the new album, to really find all the nooks and crannies. So how do we feel about it? Well, let's dive in. Rock Flute by Jethro Tull. So Jethro Tull, I don't really think needs a huge introduction. You know, big rockers from the late 60s, early 70s claim to fame with Aqualung, uh, Passion Play, Thick as a Brick, I Love Records, like in, uh, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, Too Young to too young to die, too old to rock and roll. And uh, I even like some of their 80s stuff, you know, like Beast and the Broadsword, Crest of a Knave. Like, they're, they're still fine. They're still fine. Um, and Jethro Tull went on a fairly lengthy hiatus in the early 2000s up till last year when they finally put out The Zealot Gene. And The Zealot Gene kind of continuing the... I guess, landscape that Ian Anderson had been playing around with in his solo career with Thick as a Brick 2 and Homo Erectus. Homo Erectus? Uh, it's something along those lines. Uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed those records. So when The Zealot Gene was less than stellar for me, like it was one of the more forgettable albums of last year. I don't know, I was... Not all that excited for New Tall right away, but, you know, now we have Rock Flute. And Rock Flute is, on the one hand, following off of the momentum and heels of the Zealot Gene, but on the other hand, it feels like a very different beast. Ian Anderson originally wanted this to be an instrumental album, specifically around and structuring around the flute and the flute music, and he had pretty much constructed most of the music found on this. But he's been really thinking about and contemplating about the pre-Christian religions and kind of the folklore aspect of, you know, the passed down through verbal traditions of religion and spirituality. And how most of that was lost, destroyed, or eradicated. <laughs> and kind of thinking about, like, how we moved from, uh, how we moved towards a monotheistic kind of idea of spirituality. Kind of lost touch with all those personalities of the different gods and the different uh, kind of higher beings. And the name of the album kind of takes uh, homage to that with Rock being an homage to Ragnar Rock, you know, the destruction of Asgard, the destruction of uh, heaven and reality, as well as flute being flute. And, you know, it's, you know, kind of a double entendre in that sense. Um, and so most of the lyrical content of this kind of takes a page from these pre-Christian deities and entities and traditions and really playing around with that. And in some respects, I think it works very, very well because it really solidifies and anchors this album thematically and lyrically around how we used to worship these kinds of deities. You know, you would have a, um, a singular god or a couple gods specifically around um, farming or agriculture or growth and whatnot. Another one for fertility, another one for travel, another one for war. So like kind of doing this personification of a human uh, experience within the divine and the spirituality. And I really like that kind of a concept. And the other thing that I really like is the overlap of a lot of these deities, you know, and this is found within the third track of All Father, where you have like Jupiter where you have Odin and you have all these other gods that essentially fill the same role within the human experience. I really, really love how they're talking about, you know, the trickster gods and the minstrel within the eighth track, uh, the bountiful harvest within the cornucopia within the ninth track, or you have this more primal savagery within Hammer and Hammer and Wolf Unchained, uh, you know, with our relationship with the wilds in that sense. And I really, really like how Ian structures this. Now, I have heard a number of people saying that the, the singing styles of Ian Anderson is kind of the low point, and I see that, you know, it's it's not it's not unwarranted. Uh, Ian's voice has aged, and maybe not in the best of sense, but I still think he's commanding the, the lyrical content and that vocal works very, very well. Like, I'm not as put out by a singing on this one. I actually really enjoy this kind of softer approach that he's bringing. You know, he's not belting it out as he once was back in the 70s, but he knows where his limits are. And for the most part, he stays within it. You know, he's only really towing the line of what's acceptable in that sense. The real star performer here is the music that's being centered around the flute. And I think 
think that is where this album really, really shines, and you can feel that on pretty much most of the tracks. Now, because of this, there are certain aspects of Jethro Tall that we found within either Ian Anderson's solo work or the past album of The Zealot Gene that have kind of taken a backseat, and I'm okay with that. You know, there's not quite as many uh, acoustic ballads on this in terms of the piano or the acoustic guitar. There's a lot more emphasis on the flute and even a lot more emphasis on the electric guitar as well. And I think part of that is Ian no longer taking up the guitar and just focusing in on the flute itself. And that has honestly elevated a lot of the music that's found within this. I also love the fact that this album is bookended by this kind of like primal aspect of this very rugged Ian breathing into the microphone very harshly. You know, it's kind of reminding me of like the Northman that came out last year or the year before, which was this really brutal film about the berserkers and the uh, Vikings, you know, in the Northern European Isles. Uh, and I really, really like that. And I feel like he's channeling this energy here, you know, with the Norse mythology, with the Roman mythology, with the Greek mythology, and kind of encapsulating that all in here. And again, Again, the music really does elevate and um, solidify that kind of a concept. Uh, the Feathered Consort, the fourth track on here, has this really primal and really guttural aspect on it that I can't help but love. Um, but I was talking about the bookmarking tracks on here, the first and the last one, and I love how it does a good job of opening up the album and closing the album off for a very good listen overall. The last thing that I want to talk about is actually the structure. I mean, this is only 12 tracks along 45 minutes worth of music, so it's about one record worth of music, and I think that provides the perfect amount of this style of music. I think any more and I would have been over bombarded, over saturated with it, and I didn't, I feel like I wouldn't have liked it as much as I did here. But as it is, it provides a really good start to finish flute rock music. You know, it's it's great. Um, I, I really thoroughly enjoyed this a lot more than the Zealot Gene. This is one that I've been coming back to with a lot more gusto. And I feel like there's a lot more memorable passages on this track than there ever was on anything from Jethro Tall, probably since Songs from the Wood. You know, if I'm being perfectly honest. Unlike the Zealot Gene, I have a feeling I'll be, you know, a, a lot more favorable to this album by the end of the year. But, you know, time will tell in that sense. What I will say, wrapping this all up, is Rock Flute from Jethro Tall is one that I would absolutely pick up in physical format. You know, we're obviously well and far away from that 70s stint of uh, Jethro Tall music, but I feel like we're starting to kind of edge back there a little bit. This is one that I would highly recommend, especially if you're a Jethro Tall fan and if you're just a fan of rock music, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with this one. So go and check it out. This one gets the note seal of approval. I feel much more comfortable putting this alongside the 70s run of Jethro Tall than I would probably most of their other albums that they released outside of the 70s. So there you go. That's my thought of Rock Flute from Jethro Tall. What did you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.